Do you remember when white and blue LEDs first appeared in the scene and they said, Oh wow, these are amazing, they're going to last 100,000 hours. Well, it turns out they don't. This clock is not that old. You can find the original video. I shall provide a link to the original video where I took this clock apart. I left it on deliberately just to see how fast the LEDs degraded. Uh, segments have disappeared. They've gone a lot dimmer. If I, if I turn the light off and I set a lower intensity on this, Oh, you can see that uh, there is major, major, that's the supposed to be low intensity, it's virtually zero intensity, and even full intensity is kind of looking a bit sad. It's, it's not very good. Anyway, watch your eyes, the light is coming back, and just in time we're going to head over to the bench, and we'll open this up and take a look inside, and we'll look at its replacement and see if it's going to be any better. We are back at the bench and we're ready to explore. As a quick reminder, this is actually still lit. Let's go through the intensity settings. That's the lowest intensity, which is nothing now. Um, oh, that was the highest intensity setting. It's not that great. The segments that I've seen the least use in 24-hour clock mode are the brightest ones. The other ones have gone a very distinct shade of grey. Watch your eyes, the light is coming back but not from this. Okay, let's open it up. Now, if I recall correctly, this unit had discrete LEDs, which is nice. It means that theoretically you could change all the LEDs in it, but they are super duper tiny surface mount LEDs. And that means the likelihood of that being fun is very slim. It does mean you could customize it, but these things are cheap. They're mass produced. There are two weaknesses to gallium nitride LEDs. The gallium nitride technology is a thin film technology. It's very delicate. The first LEDs were just disastrously unreliable. And the second weakness is the fact that there's phosphor involved. Now, how does this come apart? Does this unclip? It does unclip. Oh, bits have popped out. And there are the LEDs. To be fair, to be fair, they're not super tiny. So if you were patient enough, there are two LEDs per segment. If you're patient enough, you could use hot tweezers to remove the originals and then painstakingly soldier in lots of new LEDs. But whether that is, is justifiable is debatable. Now, what I want to know is if I bring in the new clock, this is the classic box they're supplied and hopefully it's the same style. But this one I deliberately chose red LEDs. I think they're pretty much similar. Hopefully direct drive and the same driving system. Because if these are not phosphor based red LEDs, that, that is a possibility. The gallium nitride uh, blue chip stimulating red phosphor, that would be annoying because that's the same weaknesses. Incidentally, the original 100,000 hour lifespan they used to quote for white LEDs <laughs> lying through their teeth as they did so. They were actually quoting the actual lifespan, proven lifespan of the traditional red LEDs because the old fashioned red LED alarm clocks, they just never faded. They were great. I mean, I suppose they did lose a little bit of intensity over time. This is not coming off. Is it just because I'm not applying the force? Let me just zoom out a bit so you're not not getting cramped here. But the red ones, they, they do fade a little bit over time, but not that much. Oh, this clipped together quite tightly. Let's try not to burst the LEDs off the circuit board in the process. Oh, it's very crunchy and clicky. And the buttons are going to go flying, like they did with the other one when I opened it. Do I have to take this base off first? I'm not sure. How does this come off? Does it pull out? It pulls out. I think that might be a good idea before we go any further. Hmm, tricky. And I've gone too far now. I can't just pause and say, eh, one moment, please, because really, most of the way there, I think. Oh, here we go. He said optimistically, oh, you know what? Oh, there's a little bit of plastic has dropped off. I think that's important. I wonder if they've actually hidden the screws under here. That would be so annoying if they had. 
I don't feel any screws under there. I shall just keep prizing and see what happens. This is where I'm going to end up pausing. Now, this uh, battery cover here is annoying because even when you've unscrewed it, it doesn't pop out. That is super annoying. Right, I think there's clips under here. Hopefully there's not screws. It's making crunchy noises. This is my new clock. It may be, it may be deceased already. Oh, yeah, this wasn't a good idea, was it? It was not a good idea. It is quite a nice clock, though. Nice big digits. Oh, n note that some of the listings on eBay say jumbo digit clock, and they show a picture of it completely out of scale, literally the size of a sofa. Oh, this is not going out. I'm wondering if there are hidden screws here. That would be so annoying if there were. Or is it just because the clips have uh, just re-clipped? This is going to break, isn't it? It is kind of going back... Uh, right, okay, I'm wondering if there are screws in the front. I could peel this off, and when I do peel it off, I'll discover there are no screws under it, and that it is now ruined. Let's peel it off. There are no screws under it. Oh, wait, no. No, there are screws. There are screws. The varmints. That's just mean. Very mean. It's almost like they're trying to keep us out of this. Is that going to be better? Yeah, that's better. And the LEDs are... Oh, there's a little plastic pillar that I've snapped off. Uh, the LEDs do look like raw red LEDs. Oh, joy. Let's take a look at it. Let's compare the two of them. Different processor. Different pin count. I wonder if it's direct drive. That one was direct drive, if I recall correctly. And it would be good if this one was as well, because I don't like the multiplexing when they basically cheap out. Although I see lots of transistors. I have a horrible feeling this might be multiplexed. But it's hard to say. There is quite a lot more transistors than the other one. Are there one, two, three, four, five transistors? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I think this might be multiplex. That would go for the segments. I'm not really sure. But anyway, uh, it's re actual red LEDs. And this is good because it means that, you know, the red LED technology was much more robust. Instead of being a thin film, it's actually based on a solid crystal, like a proper diode junction. And that makes it much more reliable. Is this compatible, this lead? Am I going to stuff in an incompatible lead and blow this clock up? Let's try. Let's stuff this lead in here. There we go. Ooh, lovely, bright, sharp. Sharp red LEDs. Oh, look at that. It's quite nice. It's doing its little uh, test routine here. Ooh, that's nice in its own right, isn't it? But with the cover in front of it, <laughs> things are dropping out here. Yeah, with the cover in front of it, it will just add that nice bit of diffusion. Okie dokie. Right, watch your eyes. Light's coming back. Okay, well, I'm going to put this together, and I shall keep you updated on the progress of how well it lasts. Um, while we've got this circuit board out here, let's pop that battery cover open. Because the battery cover is just annoying. Look, even in its open position, it's just not popping out from the behind. That is terrible. It's just too tight a fit. But it's out now. Oh, that peeper, that's going to come off. Or I'll just not use it. There's a microphone in here. What's that about? Oh, it's for listening to you. I wonder if it's got a, a voice command to turn it off. Ugh. Yeah, that's odd. It has temperature. I don't know if I'm in a temperature or not. Hmm. But anyway, that is it. Um... I'll put this under test, and I shall keep you updated, and I'll provide a link in the description, a bit more information, and a link in the description to the original uh, reverse engineering of this clock, because they do look very similar. And uh, then you can make up your own mind. Do I want a white or blue or green clock that fades over time, or do I want a traditional red one that most likely keeps its intensity for many, many years longer than the other colours? And... Uh, I would say go for the red. That's definitely the best option.